Hey guys, welcome back. So uh, first off, before we start, let me just go ahead and say that I was able to fix that pen issue. So that's exciting. Um, anyway, before I get off topic, let's go ahead and learn some differential equations. So let's go ahead and pick up where we left off in the previous video. So again, right now we are considering constant coefficients, homogeneous, second order differential equations. So it looks like this, homogeneous because set equal to zero, second order because the highest order of our unknown function is the y double prime, and then constant coefficients because we are, we are assuming that a, b, and c are all constants. And the other thing that we decided is that we are going to assume our solution y is of the form e to the r times t, where r is an unknown that we will be solving for. So basically the idea is we're going to differentiate it two times and throw it back into our differential equation and solve for r, and what we will end up with is a solution. And in case some of you guys watching this video uh, have not watched the previous video on how I reached this assumption, um, go ahead and watch the previous video and I explain it there. So anyway, let's go ahead and um, throw our assumption, our assumed solution form into our differential equation. So we have y is equal to e to the rt, and that makes y prime equal to r times e to the rt, because when we differentiate it, we gotta multiply uh, using the chain rule. Um, and we get y double prime is equal to r squared e to the rt. So let's go ahead and throw this, these three equations into our differential equation. So we get a times r squared e to the rt plus b times r e to the rt and then plus c times e to the rt. And again, this is equal to zero because it's homogeneous. So anyway, let's go ahead and factor out an e to the rt out of everything. So we get e to the rt times a r squared plus b times r plus c. And now we're gonna use this to solve for r. So the first thing that I wanna note is this guy right here, e to the rt, let's go ahead and plot it out. Um, so if this is the t-axis, then at t equals zero, uh, our function e to the rt starts at one, right? And as we increase, it's gonna look something like this, assuming r is positive. And if r is negative, it's gonna look like something like this, where it's going to approach zero. And also for the case that r is equal to zero, it's just gonna stay equal uh, to one right here. But in all these cases, we notice that e to the rt is never zero. It's non-zero along the entire domain for all values of r. And because of that, we can actually divide uh, both sides of this equation by e to the rt, which basically cancels it out because zero divided by e to the rt is again zero. So what I'm left with is something that we refer to as the characteristic equation. So let's, so let's take this result and what we're left with after we cancel out e to the rt is zero is equal to a r squared plus b r plus c, and now we can use the quadratic equation to solve for r. So r is going to be equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2 times a. So the next thing that I want to point out is that we have this plus and minus, and that means that we actually have two roots. We have r is equal to negative b plus all this stuff, and we have r is equal to negative b minus all that stuff. So what we actually get from these, um, from this characteristic equation right here, what we actually get is one root, which we will refer to as r1, and another root, which we will refer to as r2. So if we take this result, and we plug it back up into our original assumption that y is of the form e to the rt, then we have two potential solutions. We have y1, which is equal to e to the r1 times t, and we also have y2, which is equal to e to the r2 times t. Now, since both of these solutions are valid, and since we are dealing with linear second order differential equation, that, that's a key thing, that's a key idea. Because it's linear, we can define a final solution we'll call y, and this is just gonna be equal to the linear combinations of y1 and y2, which comes out to be c1 times e to the r1t plus c2 e to the r2 times t. So let's just do a quick recap of what we just went over. Um, so we're considering second order 
constant coefficient, linear, homogeneous uh, differential equations of this form, like this. And we said that by assuming a solution of the form e to the r times t, we were able to derive a characteristic equation uh, that allows us to solve for r. So r came out to be uh, pl uh, sorry, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2 times a. So this gives us r1 and it gives us r2. And then we said since it's linear and since we have two solutions because we have two roots, we're going to let our solution y be linear combinations of those solutions. So it comes out to be y is equal to c1e to the r1t plus c2e to the r2 times t. Now there's three different cases for our results of r1 and r2 that I want to discuss in the next videos. Uh, the first case is for r1 and r2 are real numbers. And if they're real numbers, then well, we will get a solution that looks just like this. And it's pretty simple and straightforward. However, we also need to consider the case where R1 and R2 are imaginary. So let's say that whenever we come back um, and solve for R using the quadratic formula, um, let's say that this comes out as negative. Then we'll have a negative under the square root, which will give us a complex number. And if we have a complex number, so imaginary or complex, which means it also includes a real part, if we have uh, this case, case two, what we will have to do is use Euler's formula, which will allow us to turn this exponential form in terms of cosines and sines using Euler's formula. And we will discuss that in much more detail in the next videos. Um, and then finally, we need to consider the case where R1 is equal to R2. So this corresponds to the case that we will refer to as repeated roots. So if we get repeated roots as our solution to this quadratic formula, then we will have to do something a little more involved, uh, but, uh, but again, we will get to that in a later video. So anyway, the point of this video was to just introduce the idea of this characteristic equation. Um, and basically that is the underlying process in how we solve constant coefficient, second order linear, uh, homogeneous differential equations. It's really just a matter of getting these two roots, R1 and R2, and then plugging them back into our original assumption to get our function y. So in the next few videos, we are going to take a look at each of these cases and work out specific examples so we can better demonstrate it in a less abstract way. So anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.